Weekly update for Friday, July 20th. And this is from the back cover of uh, Cerebus number 292. Meeting Harlan Ellison on the last stop of the U.S. tour 1982. He was scheduled to do a signing two days or so after ours at one of Chuck Rosansky's Mile High stores in Colorado. I saw one of the flyers and mentioned that I was sorry I couldn't be there because I would sure like to meet him. Uh, the staff of the store heaved a sigh of relief. Evidently he was in town and they had asked if he wanted to meet us. And he had said that he wanted to meet us if we wanted to meet him, and they couldn't think of a diplomatic way to ask if we wanted to meet him. I had no idea that that was how the world of fame worked, but it is a very good rule of thumb. Make sure someone wants to meet you before you agree to meet them. Uh, he actually read Cerebus, which was mind-boggling to me. He invited me to come out to visit him at Ellison Wonderland, which I did sometime in the next year. Uh, he was going through a backlash at the time, as I recall, having been considered the ne plus ultra of science fiction authors for a number of years. He was suddenly being assailed right, left, and center. It got a whole lot worse for him before it started getting better. I remember him telling me that I would hear a lot of awful stories about him that weren't true. Uh, being just a kid and unwise to the ways of the world, I couldn't for the life of me see why anyone was want to say bad things about Harlan Ellison. In the ensuing 20 years, of course, I've had more than sufficient first-hand experience with what seems to be a centerpiece of human nature. Uh, of course, Dave Sim and Cerebus have never been acknowledged in the comic book field as being anything, so for me it has been really a matter of going from being universally ignored to being universally hated. Ah, uh, not altogether different conditions. I can't imagine what it must have been like to go from being universally exalted by the madding crowd to attracting the level of vituperation that Harlan went through. Living well is the best revenge, he told me on that visit. Revenge? I remember thinking, what does Harlan Ellison need to have revenge for? Harlan's life was just one continuous victory, wasn't it? Uh, like I say, I was just a kid and unwise to the ways of the world. Anyway, we had dinner with him and a number of Mile High staffers. The waitress was pretty cute, and Harlan made a point of propositioning her several times through the meal, which she just sort of laughed off. Finally, she brought him his dessert, which was a chocolate parfait, as I recall, and he told her, Look, if you won't come back to my hotel room with me, I'm going to dive face first into my dessert. I was to Harlan's left, and the waitress looked at me. I said, you don't know who this is. He isn't kidding. So she looked back at Harlan and said, I'm sorry, I'm afraid not, or words to that effect. And Harlan dove face first into his dessert. I grabbed our camera and took a picture when he surfaced. Harlan was at the time uh, what was called a ladies' man, uh, what we call now in the... Uh, hashtag me too age uh, sexual criminals uh, but uh, it was interesting because I phoned uh, Harlan after the back cover came out uh, because he was on the on the comp list and I said uh, Harlan did uh, did you see the back cover where uh, where I talked about the first time that we met and he said uh, yeah, you've got me uh, diving face first into my desert. I hope it was a nice desert. I hope it was the Gobi Desert or the Sahara Desert. So, touche, touche Harlan. And uh, I, since that time, I have been very careful any time that I'm spelling desert to put two S's in it. And any time I'm spelling desert, to put one S in it. So this is fun. Uh, let's do another week with Harlan Ellison. We talked about a lot of stuff at that first dinner and one of the things that we talked about was um, Harlan reading the Mr. Mind serial in uh, Captain Marvel Adventures when he was a kid. 
Uh, it was one of the first continuing stories in the comic book field. And uh, he said uh, he had owned and read every part of the, I forget what it was, like 20 parts or something like that. It was a very, very long continued serial, uh, the Mr. Mind serial. The only part that he hadn't read or seen or owned was Captain Marvel Adventures number 27, where uh, Mr. Mind, spoiler warning, was uh, revealed to be a worm with a uh, little electronic speaking device around his neck. So having noted that, uh, that's interesting. Uh, when I got home, I started searching my uh, comics buyer's guides as they were coming in, uh, which had ads for back issue comics. And sure enough, I found an ad uh, in uh, somebody had in there where they had Captain Marvel Adventures number 27 and Captain Marvel not being a real hot property at the time. It was like eight bucks or something like that. So uh, I sent the guy check for uh, for eight bucks and a week and a half, two weeks later, got in Captain Marvel Adventures number 27 and looked at it. <laughs> well, there, there it is, Captain Marvel Adventures number 27 and uh, uh, flipped it open and there's the Mr. Mind serial. And sure enough, this is this is the one where he's revealed to be a uh, uh, a genius worm. Uh, doesn't mean a heck of a lot to me, but I think this will uh, this will be a pleasant surprise for uh, Mr. Ellison. And uh, having gotten his address at the dinner, uh, I proceeded to wrap up um, Captain Marvel Adventures number 27 and send it to him, uh, saying that uh, now at the very least he owed me his firstborn. So that's your cliffhanger, and next week I will tell you uh, what Harlan Ellison's reaction was.